First of all, and then these lovely people will play music by Debussy and Hamel, and they will introduce. Will be introduced by uh, Katja, and uh, she will tell you about them. And then I start to talk about Debussy. Okay. <laughs> Why does this? So I'm Katrina Lavenok. Um, I'm a director of International Music Academy, and I'm delighted to present our fabulous faculty and students <laughs> of our academy. This is Alina Yudin. She's a, she's a wonderful pianist, great teacher. Her students are all crazy about her. Some of them are here <laughs> today. Um, she's going to play uh, works by Debussy. She's a Ukrainian pianist. Uh, this is Tomas Johnson. Um, He's a student of mine. Um, he's preparing for a state competition, and he's performing Ravel Sonati in the second and first movement, the second and third movement. Oh, and uh, if we have time, I might play the first movement <laughs> <laughs> so that you have the whole piece. You need to know the whole story. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> Stick to them. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, and we're looking forward to hearing you. So we'll get a first musical musical impression by Debussy. The first of the first set of images. Image means pictures, and uh, the name of it is Reflet sur l'eau, Reflections on the Water.
much. It's a, a very appropriate introduction to, um, it's a little bit, uh, no, it's not very nice to uh, say so this introduction to our concert. It's a concert on her own. But we are playing on Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday the other image, but you see. Image is French for images, pictures. And um, you see that uh, the name, the style of Debussy, God, has a reason. What was the name of this, his style? Impressionism. 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 So you, you associate with that uh, paintings by Monet, uh, Renoir, you name them, Sisley. And the Houston Symphony decided to have a collaboration with the Museum of Fine Arts. They are running a, a show, Monet and the Seine, La Seine, the river which flows through Ile de France and Paris, which was one of the favorite subjects of, of Impressionist painting. And uh, a river is what she was playing, reflections on water, is a, a model for sounds which seem to have no end. They are running like water. And the instrument which is most appropriate to do that is obviously the harp, not the piano. Of course the piano, but if you listen again to this piece, it's like in every bar the harp is playing. And uh, do you see himself was very unhappy with being named an impressionist? Because he thought that people thinking this is like you, you put your right foot down on the pedal and let the piano swim. <laughs> in fact, writing for Debussy was a, a matter of highest precision. And the image for orchestra, of course, as I said, using the harp to the full extent, are most painstakingly woven pictures. You can't imagine how many details Debussy invented in orchestration. He was a genius in using the instruments and a genius in combination of instruments. And the scores of uh, the three images I will talk about are so complicated that until now it is not finished. What we need, all what all musicians need now, is clean editions, editions which are edited, not just by an edition and printed, like Durand did 100 years ago, they printed it and they sell it until now with, and have not, never spent a week on the cleanup which is to be done in the score. So now we are waiting, we have Je, La Mer and the other big scores, but we don't have the image. And every time you study these pieces, you're sitting there and you're torturing your head, is this a dot or is it a dash? or is it uh, even wrong notes? We are waiting for the genius editor who has to be a conductor, a better composer, musicologist, to dare to tell us this has to be that way. So just, it's a incredibly meticulously written music, not to think that just, uh, yeah, put the foot down and play. Can you play us um, just from the beginning? Features of Debussy's music, which uh, are very clear. The first phrase in this D flat ma major, you have three layers of music. This number one is the basement. This is the, f the waves 
and there's one music which in the orchestra would be the horn with the harp. A whole orchestra playing and all the music of DBC is like a miniature orchestra with lots of colors and interior voicing it. Very beautiful, very precise. And then, boom, boom, boom. What is this? This is parallel chords in chromatic, complicated chords, chromatically just shifting. This is his invention. It's very beautiful. It, it anticipates a lot what jazz musicians, until Oscar Peterson and later, uh, were feasting on the beautiful chords which came from French music. In the orchestra, layers of music are easier to do because you have so many musicians doing that. Um, now about, about the, the pictures uh, or the image which we are playing, what are the names? The names are Jique, Rode de Printemps and Iberia. Jique has an association uh, which with a, an English jig. The jig in Baroque music was a 6-8, uh, lovely last movement of a suite. It's completely different in DBC, and it features one beautiful melody <coughs> with my voice today, I will not even try, uh, played by the, by the oboe d'amore. Oboe d'amore is, you all know what an, uh, an oboe is. No voice, this rather short instrument which has sometimes a squeaky tone. And the English horn is longer, is a fifth lower, and is like a lower, an alto voice. In between is the oboe d'amore. It has the quality of, of fresh oboe and, and the darkness of it. And it plays this. Which is seemingly a folk, uh, a folk melody. It's not. It's the it's, 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 it's usually meant to be an English tune. So Gigue uh, was by musicologists put in the English corner. Rond de Printemps is French. Rond de Printemps means round dances of spring, and uh, uses French melodies. Very uh, rare case in the BC that he uses a folk melody because it was far too to, um, let's say, sophisticated, or, or, or he didn't want to be seen as a cheap uh, user of, of folksy music. But, we will not have a walk in the, in the forest anymore, is the name of this, uh, uh, which comes in, in hundred different all the bigger, smaller versions. Around that, he, he does this round dance. Very beautiful and incredibly tricky for the orchestra, and not gratifying because nobody in the audience should ever have an idea that this is tricky. It should just sound fresh and friendly. And the most famous of the image is Iberia. Iberia obviously means Spain. And Spain, in three movements, has three picturesque names. The first is par uh, les rues, les rues et les chemins on the on the streets and the roads, and you, you literally can see the the the, the two two posts. Yes. Better. Yes. <laughs> uh, literally can can hear the the the, the boys whistling and, and uh, uh, the, the, you can see the, the, the market and, and, and all the street traffic. The second is Les Parfums de la Nuit, uh, the scents of night, the parfums of night, which uh, is called by, by Boulez as one of the high points of Debussy's uh, um, art. And I, I will try.
core ingredients of many do see pieces. And the last movement is uh, Martin de Jour de Fête, a uh, morning of a, of a holiday, of a holy day, with uh, like a tourbillon, what is a tourbillon? A, a whirlwind of, 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 of melodies, floss, uh, little um, motifs floating in the air, and then the whole orchestra sounds like a guitar. It's uh, the whole string section, and the whole, not the cello, but the, the violas and the, and, the, and the violins take the fiddle down and play, strum it like a guitar. Very funny music, brilliant, and uh, quite difficult. And uh, I hope that you go there because this music is too beautiful, it doesn't sell so much. We, we would like to see more people in the hall than we have sold until now. That's also a reason why I'm talking about that. No, this is an insider music, a musician's music. And uh, the Houston Symphony is daring and nice to allow me to do such a sophisticated program. I'm very proud that they're doing that and very happy. And uh, I hope that the audience will uh, reward this courage. We get a second of the piano image. There are six of them, three for the orchestra. The three for the orchestra are not written as a, as a suite. They are written over a period of, of eight years or longer because the music was very slow. Not because he was lazy, but he was really very meticulous and very self, uh, autocritical, self-critical. But there are six um, 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 images for piano, and the next one is called Hommage à Rameau, homage to the French Baroque composer Rameau, which is, uh, let's say, a translation of, of old music in his time.
see, pieces will be the second part of the program. In the first part of the program, there's another French composer, usually mentioned at the same time as Debussy, Ravel, but who is very, very different from Debussy. Debussy was really a man who was finding new things at highest risk, very breakable, very sensitive, very um, unexplored. So he was always at, 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 yeah, at, the, at the risk of failure. Ravel, who was about 10 years younger, was a master and of the highest security, of the highest precision, of a Swiss watchmaker's precision. Not like Debussy was precise to do the, the new little things. Ravel was writing perfect uh, objects, toys. And um, they both respected each other very much. Uh, some people wanted to create kind of a, a, a Brahms Wagner opposition. It didn't work really. They liked it, each other and, and, and had great esteem. But um, Ravel uh, is more popular than Debussy because he wrote a couple of really outward brilliant pieces like uh, Daphne's or Laval's or piano pieces like uh, Scarbo, which is one of the most difficult piano pieces ever uh, in a, a translation of Liszt in a new language. And, uh, and then he also had the same, you see, Hommage uh, à Rameau, it doesn't sound like bar Baroque music. Probably the Gregorian chant at the beginning. Ravel also was looking back. He wrote after World War I, uh, homage to six friends who had died in the war, uh, Le Tombeau de Couperin. Le Tombeau de Couperin in, 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 is the, the grave of Couperin, which was a contemporary of Rameau, um, means in French not that you go to the graveyard and see the tombstones. It's a, um, it's an epitaph, a, a homage, a, rather literature than in, 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 in stone. So the, the suite, to, uh, um, Tombeau de Coupin, is made of six movements, and they are all Baroque dances, real dances, not like this. A little bit the same, we will hear now, is the Sonatina. Sonatina was a small sonata in the classical time usually written for young people or for people who didn't have lots of time. So, Beethoven wrote Opus 53, Waldstein, which is a half an hour, then he wrote Opus 49, 1 and 2, which are both only 15, 16 minutes, and they were sometimes called Sonatina, kleine sonaten, little sonatas. Sonatina by Ravel is also, compared to other pieces, klein, small, and um, precious, but it's, it's tricky. It's a very nicely written piano piece, and I would say that we should listen to the first movement now, and you will hear the, the, the difference between Debussy, who is like meandering, a little bit unpredictable, a little bit just always showing that he is just aware of big freedom if he was fighting for. Ravel is ordin ordinary, it's ordin not ordinary, is well, uh, you feel the rules, you feel the strict uh, um, construction and the technique, and, and, but the, the charm is incredibly French. I think we should have a try of first moment. <laughs>
see there's a similarity, of course. It's uh, using similar chords, uh, like those seventh chords in seven nine, but there's one main difference. Debussy would never have written a sonata movement with an exposition, a development, and a recapitulation of first subject, second. It comes back at the end, at the, like at the beginning. This is how we're looking back. Why did I mention the Tombeau de Couperin, which was an homage, like homage à Rameau? If you listen to this music and to Tombeau de Couperin on the piano, you immediately feel that there is potential of orchestration, and Ravel did. He did four of the Tombeau de Couperin. If he would have decided to make a little sinfonietta from the Sonatina, it would be a beautiful orchestra piece, and it lends itself to orchestration. What we are playing is called Mamerloa, Mother Goose, Matushka, Gusin, Bramski. This is originally five easy pieces for piano forehands, written for two lovely children of a friendly couple, where he could spend time with them, even on their boat. He was very, very friendly with them, and he adored children. So he wrote this music for children, which Unfortunately, partly is far too difficult to be played by children, <laughs> but it's 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 very nice and and well the beginning of the first La uh, Pavane de la Belle au Bois dormant, the Pavane of the Sleeping Beauty, is is so easy that even I could play, but I, I don't make a fool out of myself. So those five pieces got very successful and famous, and he orchestrated them. And Diaghilev, the devil of Russian spirit in French uh, surroundings, inspired him to uh, write things in between. And a little bridge music, but also a whole introduction and uh, a new piece which is called Dance du Way, the dance of the spinning wheel, when uh, the girl is. Uh, punching her finger and falling asleep, and then she wakes up after having been the bed of mother or mom. This is an about a 30 minutes piece. It's just a gem, a joy to listen. It's, I think, fairy tales for every age, for, for real children to uh, those who have outgrown the age, but not the spirit of childhood. And uh, it's one of my all-time favorites. And uh, I did it here about, I don't know, 15, no, 10, 7 years ago. We did also the Dubussy image I was looking up 11 years ago. And um, still, again, you see the Ravel pieces are precise, well constructed. The Dubussy pieces are like a uh, building of Gaudi. A French building like Corbusier and Gaudi, like this. I don't know what is more interesting. Certainly, from my point of view, it's more difficult to write like Debussy. And I had a teacher in Italy, a very famous man. His name was Franco Ferrara, who once astonished me by saying, Amiro Ravel. I admire Ravel. But adore Debussy. I adore Debussy. This is strange to say that Debussy in your mind lasts longer. But let's be happy to have Ravel. <laughs> you will hear more of Ravel, uh, special, special uh, features in the second movement of the sonata, which is a men menuet, really in the old style. Dun, 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 dun. Like a, a, a artificial naivety. And the last movement is a toccata. Real difficult, real nice, and real, um, let's say, show piano music. And that brings me to the third piece of our program, which is a piano show music. It's the second piano concerto. The se second, I say the second, because they were, they were written at the same time. He wrote two piano concerti, the last big works he could write 
before his mind was blocked by the progressive disease, physical disease of his, of his brain. And he said that every bar he wrote cost him blood. He lost speech, he lost writing, he lost memory, and he lived about six years in, in a half darkness of his mind. That's very tragic, but you can imagine how hard he was working to hide this from the world and write the most sunny, funny, and brilliant piano concerto of, of the 20th century. Uh, Jackie Kimura Parker, who played it, he's uh, really, I think, the, the guy who is, is uh, just born for that with his American upbringing, because Ravel was imitating or quoting or just lovingly using little uh, tastes of jazz in this concerto in a very French manner. And uh, you will enjoy this because it's, it's um, yeah, the most anti Debussy piece uh, in the world. It's very skinny very brilliant, sharp edge, and very difficult for the orchestra. It's a concerto for orchestra. Every wind player has a solo in it, which is in the book of audition excerpts. If you go into an orchestra and you want to be a little clarinet player, you have to play Ravel concerto. If you are a piccolo player, Piccolo solo. If you're a trumpet player, the trumpet solo, horn solo, bassoon solo, you name them. It's for everybody, clarinet, for everybody, it's difficult like a solo piece. So it's a, 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 a parade of soloists on stage with the pianist, of course, uh, beating everybody. That brings me back to the Sonatina, to the uh, Minuet, like homage to. Uh, earlier music and to the toccata, which is like an anticipation of the of the um, perpetuum mobile of the last movement of the of the Roman piano concerto. If we could invite our young artist, <laughs> Thomas.
Yes, thank you for listening so patiently. If you have any questions, I will try to have any answers. <laughs> if you don't, you will get it. <laughs> You, you see, you see the difference of Ravel. Ravel is brilliant. And Debussy is very rarely brilliant. It's just colorful. Both are wonderful. And if you have time on Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, I beat the drum silently. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.